A skull? Oh, yeah, we have a skull. Oh, yeah, I got the skull, yeah. All right, so um, all right, we'll, do the, we'll do a craning first. All right, so who wants to be the team? Anyone? There you go, that's perfect. All right, three of you guys, all right? So we do um, full live mode, all right? And I'll, I'll simulate things to happen to see how you guys react, all right? All right, so um, we'll start with a... Pretend we'll do a lumbar laminectomy first, all right? So just pretend this patient's face down. Right. We'll flip it, right? Can we flip this? Can I flip this or not? Yeah, of course. His arm might fall off, doctor. Right. We apologize. <laughs> We do accept donations. I killed you. I killed you. Brad. Okay. All right, so we'll do a lumbar surgery, okay? All right, so we're doing a patient's a trauma, their legs don't move, there's a huge hematoma, all right, and a big fracture. All right, so I'm going to tell you right now there's a spinal fluid leak, okay? So we'll gown up. All right, so who's my team? We got Sarah and Lily. Grab your gown and gloves, and the doctor, make sure you... Sarah, Sandra. 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 All right. All right, All right. All right. So you have a gown for me? Yes, sir. What kind of gloves do you want, doctor? Eight. Eight. I'm really a 14. My squeeze is with eight.
Yeah. I'm right behind you, Lily. Okay. Shana. Thank you. Behind you. behind you. I'm like right in front of this camera every five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so who's my anesthesia? Me. I'm okay, you're up here. You have your clamps when they drape so you can do strip them off? Yeah. All right. I'll get you a cup of coffee. Yeah. Make sure you spin. Literally get to your table when you're done, okay? Yeah. Can you eat that on the right for me? We have one second here. As I stub in, I'm wearing a mask. We have them. Yeah. You also have a down sheet. There you go. So what I do is I do four towels first, and then I do a down sheet, and then I do an IO band, okay, and then I do a drape on top. <laughs> Everyone's different. Ask them. And what do you like to do? Um, so I do for sterility. I do um, alcohol wash up front. I soak a bunch of four by four and alcohol before I'm scrubbing in, so the alcohol kills everything. And then my nurse does a beta nine scrub towel, and then a chloroprep. So that's three different things. I'm sorry, four things, I forgot my HIPAA lens. So you alcohol, then HIPAA kind of brush with the scrub brush you use, she does that, he does that. Towel, then a, chlor then a um, betadine scrub, towel, then chloroprep. So a germ that can survive four things that can kill it deserves to grow, right? <laughs> so um, we do four different things on purpose because there's nothing that can survive four different things. Right? So that's how we keep our infection rate low. It's very important in Africa, right? Because if they get infection, they're gonna die. Why? I'm not there to fix it. All right. So complication avoidance is paramount when you're in other countries because there's not a surgeon there to fix it. So you can't have neurotomies, wounds falling apart, infections, things like that. All right. So then down sheet. Hold that end of it. 
Walk that way. Keep walking. Oh, that way. On the end, we Oh, oh. You're doing great. Keep going back, 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 back. All right. Then we do Iron Man. Do you have Iron Man? We do, sir. Oh, yeah. Irony. These are my cards today. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it must be Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, so then you do Iron Man, all right? So the reason I put that on top is it, it kind of puts everything together. Like that. See that? Alright, so then I need to put it on top of the ground and yell that. Alright, so now we're we need the top shape now? We, need the shape. we just have a lapidotomy shape. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So look at the person. Alright, so hand to me so the person's up front. The surgeons are dumb. They will put on upside down. You know, they'll blame you, not themselves. But I always look, you know, and I've done thousands of times backwards. So hands me like that, right? So I go down, head, feet, all right? Then, I don't want to waste it today. All right, so then this goes down, follow the arrows, right? And this goes up. So I do, I usually do two. So this one goes down, and I do a separate one on top, and I bring that one up. Mm -hmm. The reason I do that is I want two layers between me and anesthesia. Because if I do this up top, the, the path from them to the decision is only a foot. You know, and anesthesiologists are drinking coffee on the phone doing Sudoku. They can retain my field. But I have one down here and one up top. That way, they have their own little area. And I don't want to see them anyways. <laughs> anesthesia is cool. Um, yes. All right, so now, now I drink the patient. Now it's all you, I do nothing. So now I step away, all right? So now you put the suctions up, the drill up, all that you bring your mayo stand in, you get everything set up. So everyone has their own little course of how they like things done. Um, and some scrub guys are really experienced, they're gonna do it their own way. If they're kind of new and green, we do it my way. So what I usually do is, do um, you guys have any suctions? We do. Right. So I usually do two paths, one on this side and one on this side. And I clamp it, okay? So I'll just, I'll just do like one thing. So we start handing each other all the stuff, and that goes off, and a nurse is connecting it, or a scrub tiger is not scrubbed in. It's connecting it. You dropped it too early. It's too early. I know. So you gotta hold it, okay? So now we have something else, you have a bobie. Alright, so we have the bobie now. Hold that. So it's a team sport, it's not an observer sport, right? Jump on in. Alright, hold that there. So that, you know we have two suctions, one on each side, there's a drill as well. Then I clamp each side. You ready to clamp? Yeah, you can drop that now. I might be perforated in there, but. Yeah, well, let's pretend. Okay. We're in Kenya right now. Alright, so we're just using what we got. Now. We're in Kenya. <laughs> Help her out there, Chrissy. It's right in the middle. There's some perforated ones in there, but just hand yeah, that to me. Yeah. Perfect. Alright. Things not to do. Not anymore. So we. There's a suction here, the drill here, okay? So it's all organized on the side, okay, on my field. So do you have another blue towel? There's one on, there's, I believe there's one, yeah, you can grab that one. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. There's a. All right, so then I take my blue towel, all right? So if we have my drill, my bobie, my bipolar, uh, bipolar, so all the, Things with wires, all right, on each side, all right. And I put this over like that, and I clamp it here and here. And that looks really clean, right? I can't see anything. And this keeps it from getting tangled up. Nothing drives me more nuts than a big worm's nest of stuff. So then I, I put my drill. Let's pretend it's a drill for a second. I put it over here. So then I don't need it right now. Mm -hmm. And all the things I need are up top. So bogey bipolar suction. All right, so all the other wires are down this way, and I put a second pound on top of that. So everything's covered up. The key is not letting things tangled up, all right? Um, and the surgeons will do a lot of this, a lot of this. You know, and say, doctor, stop doing that. You know, um, we don't have enough slack or something. You can say, use your words um, to us. Um, so now, we have bogey and suction, okay? So we're gonna start the surgery, so we'll do a timeout. Okay? Yep, yeah. good. I got patties too. An ortho guy set that up. We apologize. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we do our timeout. All right. So.
So um, every hospital is a little bit different, but it's usually the same. We, we have a big thing up on the wall, we follow it down the line. Um, it's a, the surgeon's favorite part of the case because he gets to hear himself talk and he wants to talk to him, you know, give us a little moment. So we do our timeout. So then now we start the case, we all go through each team. So at the end, you go, and see, do you have any concerns? We're like, all right, blood pressure soft, we're gonna use suppressors. Okay, so we're mindful of it. They put the vitals on that screen so they can watch them as well. And then we ask um, nursing surgery, if they have any concerns? So we'll say, okay, uh, we're doing a trauma surgery, we have two units of tightened blood clots, blood in the room, okay, just in case we need it. Um, and then we'll ask you, and you'll say, okay, I have the following hemostatic agents, you know, I have the following sutures, do you need anything else that you do not see here? This is the time to do it before the skin is open. So that's your job during the timeout. I say, I have this stuff, I have this stuff, is there anything else that you do not see you may not, you may need, you know, and make us look, all right? I'll say, ah, it looks like most of the stuff's here, which we all know, happens anyway. Hmm. All right, so now, knife, and scalpel. So we pretend it's scalpel, right? Just make it up. All right, so we have a scalpel, I cut the skin. Now what am I using? Oh. So I'm just gonna put my hand out. Oh. The scalpel, now what? Suction. All right, so I'm gonna suction my hand. What else do I need now? No. I'm doing a landing. It's bleeding, how do I fix it? Grab the bullet. Bobby. Okay. Who, who invented the Bobby? What specialty? Neuro. Neurosurgeon. <laughs> <laughs> we were all going to say it right. Same answer. Every time. answer. All right. So, so I do my dissection. I get my spinous process. I dissect on both sides. I get my lambda exposed. All right. So I now need a refractor. Hey, what's this? Show me a set of bellows. You guys can help out too, don't let her, let her, let her sing and swim here. <laughs> That's in your hand. So why are they called cerebellar? What was this event for? Cerebellar surgery. Attack of the head. Right? Or the pediatric surgeons will probably not call it that. Right? So they'll call it a retractor. Because they don't want to use our name. So you put the cerebellar in. Alright? Once I get down, then I usually go to the right angled um, gelpies. I don't think I have a well, we don't have the gilpie now. We'll use either, yeah. What's this called, guys? It's a Myerlin. But... Yeah. Anyone? No. Neuro is week four. We haven't got there yet. Uh, We're like a, a little well, advanced. Is awful. I know. We should. <laughs> All right, so we can use this. Um, we're pretending we're in Kenya right now, right? So, yeah, you use these right gelpies. Put them in. Opens up incision, okay? So now my spinous process is exposed. My lamina is exposed. All right, now I'm going to do my laminectomy first. So what do I do? What do I need now? How do I break the lamina, the spinous process side? What do we call it though? Lexel. Lexel. Because we're neurosurgeons. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we use the Lexel, so how are you going to answer me? Nope. Nope. So I got to be able to use it immediately. I'm looking in, I'm not looking at you. So you hand to me, it's like, can you use it? Can you use it this way? Um, Think about oh. it. Oh. Now you're like me. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm having, so a, I'm having a moment here. I'm like sweating going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're freaking him out, Doug. All right, so you got to hand the instruments the way I use them, right? The surgeon's going to get So the way it's designed is that part straight, and this part goes on curvature of my hand. Oh. All right, so you got to hand to the way I use it. So the key to surgery is you guys are handing the way the instruments are supposed to use their intended purpose. All right? So... I take the Lexel, okay, and you clean it. You have a scrub, a spray tech in your hand. You have this bone in here. Okay. Right, so you take the bone out for me. So I'll, I won't say anything, I was going something like that. No, That's right. a universal wow. symptom sign of take clean it up. All right? Yeah. All right. Sometimes there'll be nothing in there. You still got to just pretend to clean it. Okay. All right? So one scrub tech student one time said, Dr. Patel used that care, so there's nothing in it. And he goes, yeah, he just needs someone to touch it so he knows that something happened. <laughs> he, won't, he won't go back in there. It's like we literally like pretend to clean it because we're just psychologically weird like that. So even if it's empty, just go like, just, just pretend. Like, oh, yeah, cool, that's clean. Because, you know, we can't see, right? So I left cell, I thin that, and then I use my drill. All right? So the drill pedals are never near me. You know, so I always ask, can I have the drill pedals in my car, please? It's a joke. <laughs> so I drill down the lamina. Okay, so now we're going to use the lamina. Garrison. Garrison? Right? Yeah. So now I ask, oh, I got some bleeding. Can I get a four pet fuel with some uh, wax on the back of it? Uh, <laughs> 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 
Okay. With Sana, yeah. Over here. Can I have a four guys? It's the one in the middle. It's the smallest one in the middle. I feel like a rep now. It's that yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Panfield, hi, Dr. Z. Neuro, 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 neuro. Right. All right, so what's this right here? A lot of them have it written on them usually, right? So it's even better. You can't cheat now. Which Panfield is this? What number is this? Two. 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 No, it's one. Oh, that's okay. wrong. So this is my favorite <laughs> instrument. So I like this little cup here. So like I can scrape things without cutting into them. So this is in the brain a lot, just scrape. All right. Four Penfield is really good for applying wax. Look at that. This one? Okay. Oh, yeah. So I can use this like on the back of a bone and go like this. Okay. All right. And then, so then I'll ask for a Woodson. Free up the uh, ligament and flavor. Looks like a hockey stick. So here's like a kind of a Woodson. This is a dental, I think. Yeah, it is. It's so <laughs> we use this like that. So here's a lamina. And we use it to scrape off the ligament like that. All right? So, because I don't want to bite dura. I don't bite bone only. So I use it. The Woodson will become the most used instrument in the spine surgery. This is, has to be on the field at all times. Whoever we'll not use this. So, you know, right now we're operating, so you don't need that guy, you don't need this guy, you start taking your things away. All right, you can ask us too. Say, hey, do you want this still? I'm like, nah, throw them back, you know? Or keep it up front, don't, I don't need it. So we would send. So now we need kerosene. I'm not looking at you. So hand the kerosene in my hand. It's, it's, it looks like a pistol. <laughs> Which size do you want, doctor? I guess, like, give me four kerosene. <laughs> Look on the sides, you'll see numbers. Hopefully, those are old, but. Okay. Yeah. Right one. Yeah. Six, six, five, five. Oh, no. <laughs> You're doing great, lady. You're doing it. <laughs> can I use it? Can I use this thing now? It's backbiting. That back, I was just going to say. Yeah. I, I did, yeah, that's advanced. <laughs> that's good. Okay. So, this, this is um, how you normally use a kerosene. And if I want to back, I'll say back. I'll just say back, the word back. So if I say back, you can't do it like this. Oh, okay. Then I'll come, I'll come in like this and do it like that. But you know, I'll alternate, but I'll just say the word back, so. Okay. And that's all, you know. If I just say kerosene, it, it just assume it's this way, all right? So the reason it's used this way, I can use it to bite. And I always hand the ways that I use things, okay? So now, I want to use, I want to put a patty in. This is the next test. So hand me a patty, make sure it's wet. And then, yeah, so now hand it to me with a bayonet. I'm not looking at you guys, I'm gonna get my, keep my hand out. So, is this correct, guys? No. Right, so yeah. These are little subtle things you learn. So I'm not looking, I'm talking anesthesiologist. So how was golf yesterday? <laughs> Yeah, you know, can't believe this rain. <laughs> Perfect. So the reason, the way you handle this is how bayonet fan to you. You want the string going backwards. Okay, because I'm I'm going in this way. All right, see that? I want the string going behind me. Sometimes I'll say I loaded. Um, I'll say loaded reverse every now and then because I'm gonna go like this and go this way. Mm. But assume this way, all right? So they have to be wet, right? Because I, I don't want to scrape brain or anything like that. So I come in, like this string's dragging behind me, and not my field. And I'm usually under a microscope, so I literally can't see. So I'm looking at a microscope here, I'm looking at the field, I'm not doing this. And especially during aneurysm surgery, the neurosurgeon will never take his eyes off the field. Because the aneurysm ruptures, I don't know where it ruptured from, because that, that one millisecond where it ruptures, I, that input comes in my brain so I know where it happened. I cannot look away. So this is where it's paramount you hand things correctly because I can't be looking away and fixing things. Because something happens in the field, I don't know where it happened, then we're really scrambling to figure out what happened. So um, any aneurysm case, big AVM, it will usually not be a student doing the primary teching in that. It'll be an experienced person, the student will be next and learning. All right, but as you, you guys will all be there one day. They're gonna be handing things the way we want it, and it'll be seamless. I never look out. 
No. I was looking the whole time. I said, I do a, I do a patty, kerosene. Good. Can I have a three backhanded? Backhanded, I'll say 35 times. <laughs> Very good. All right, so you know, so I did laminate and we've done. All right, Woodson. Well, the next one you guys have. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nope. That was about it, guys. <laughs> Think hockey stick. Where's reenacting thing, though? There you go. Okay. All right, so here, hand me the wrong thing. Then. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, for, for fun. Yeah. yeah, I don't need this. <laughs> oh no. Uh, that, will, that way I'll never get it again. Now Should we sure. flash that, sir? Yeah. Now, now I'm showing sure so it If I really don't want, if I keep handing the wrong thing I'll never use, I'll just drop it. That, they're for a fact, I'll never be handed it again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? So I'm just giving you real life situations. <laughs> we can't throw things anymore. Don't Times have changed. People have been Alright, so what's in? So my, now my Duro is decompressed. Okay? So now we're gonna close, all right? So I get bipolar, hemostasis. I do six liters of irrigation. So why do I do six liters? Let's pretend you're in Kenya, a fly lands on the brain. How many liters of irrigation does it take to make the MIC, the mean infectious concentration, six. to non-infectious amount? Six. I can't, I, I messed that thing up. I told you that's first. <laughs> so six liters dilutes the germs, so it's non-infectious. So I just assume every case is contaminated. Mm -hmm. um, so everything I do in Kenya, I do in America. And it annoys the, scrub, the uh, scrub nurse and the nurse and the um, patch because they're bringing six liters. So we literally pour in six liters, okay? And then I'll say, my suction doesn't work, my suction doesn't work, you know, keep going, my suction doesn't work, you fix that. After six liters, now we're gonna close, okay? Hemostasis is done. So now I need O by close. So hand me a suture. I don't think we have some suture. We didn't do oh, the suture for our... We can get some for you, Doctor. We're just gonna leave them one. We're going to get right now. The, this charge nurse is in charge now. She's in. Oh, yeah, we got one there. Oh, too late. We got more. Plus one to the count. Yeah. Just just to kind of um, go over my hand sutures, right? So these are those subtle things you don't learn in school. You learn in real life. I'm kind of seeing my name now. You know. And if the patient starts moving or something, just to mess with my hand sutures, you like, Mr. Johnson, you'll be asleep again soon. I apologize. <laughs> and the anesthesia's like, they can't hear you. Like, Mr. Johnson, I apologize you heard that. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I'm right handed. And sometimes we will throw sutures backwards. Okay, and I'll tell you that too. No back throw. Alright, so, so I'm in there. Okay, so now I go like this. Alright. So that's how I that's how I like it loaded. So angle, and that's a third part for me. So that way I can go that, more ergonomic, so that. So then my hands turn like this. Now it's a right, angle, right uh, 90 degree angle, okay? So you imagine how I'm gonna use it, okay? When I come in, I'm gonna use it like that to grab the tissue. All right, so when it was like that originally, it's hard to manage, okay? So if you see me fix it two, three times, and this happens, the first time a scrub tag works with any surgeon, this will happen to every single person. Don't be offended. We'll fix the suture three, two, three times. We'll just watch them. So the person is saying, all right, what did he do to it? So you'll, you'll also catch them on their eyes. And a good person will just watch me real quick. And they'll see me move it. And then the next the next 12, they load like I do. All right, so watch how I load it. If I keep repositioning it, you know, you should probably fix it. All right, so that's how I like it loaded, all right? And sometimes I do it um, back loaded. So when I'm fixing Dura, I'm going to on the side. I'll go like that. Okay, so I need pickups. So I need heavy pickups for this. Do you have heavy pickups? You don't anything. They're on your back table, Lily. Up. Oh, so here's a good Lily, here's a good thing now, right? So now we're closing. So this is what we're watching this conversation. All right, Lily, what do I not need? That's a rhetorical question. That I don't need, that I don't need, I don't need any of this stuff. So it's also handy to use big chunks of metal. You get rid of this, get rid of this, clean up the mail. Alright, you know, and then you put all the suture stuff here. The mayo is your best friend. The best scrub techs have the best mayos. All right? You can have all the instruments in the world. If your mayo doesn't have it, you don't have it. And a good example is, uh, so Anne and Pearl, 
they have my trays down so efficiently. I, for one, for a brain tumor, I have one tray. That's it. All the instruments I use. All that garbage is thrown out. And lump, uh, for all spine, we have one tray only. And when you guys go in the field, you have like 13 trays. You don't use like 80% of the instruments. So, and, and if Pearl don't ask me what I need anyways, they just give me what I want. Let's so say you'll be using this today. You know, yep. but you, get, you don't start with that right off the bat <laughs> until you get to know the surgeon. But um, you know, it, efficiency is key. So now you just want all the clothing stuff. So you need absence, heavy pickups, like a Bonnie or something. So you have absence? Yeah, pads went teeth. Yeah, so that's in, then a bonnie or something heavy. So the fascia closure is usually ovicral, okay? And we, we do paw balls, we tie them, so you'll need a lot of them. So keep loading them. So we're tying, closing the fascia. You know, what are you doing this weekend? Anything fun? You know, loading <laughs> fascia. And then we get on subcutaneous tissues, two ovicrals, all right? So, yeah, so now I'm two O's. You hand me two O's, all right? And then, so now the skin's closed, and I like to do um, monotrol and dermal bond. So another question now you're asking me is, what do you want for dressing, right? Because you're going to put the dressing on. So before I close the skin, I usually do a chloroprep stick or a betadine. And I let that dry. And so I want the, because I want the running monotrol to drag in antiseptic. Hmm. So that way you don't get a stitch abscess. So it drags in a, a little bit of micro, a minuscule amount. And then that's how I close my monocryl. The reason I use monocryl, because in Boston we have a lot of like, um, People are very vain, so they want their stitches to look good. So monocryl is a uh, dissolving stitch, and it heals a nice faint line. So you know that's why we use a lot of cosmetic stuff, a lot of plastic surgery things sneak into us. So I use a running monocryl, and then I do a wet and dry, and I do a dermal bond. So I did a chloroprep or betadine scrub, and then I close it. I do a wet and dry, and I do a dermal bond. The reason I do a dermal bond is I know for a fact the skin is sterile because I just re-sterilized it. Now I'm locking in the sterile environment with the dermal bond. The dermal will seal over it. Now that incision line is sterile. So no matter where they go, for at least two weeks, it will stay sterile inside and heal well. Because infections you don't want. All right, so now, once I do that, um, I usually don't put the dermal bond, I just scrub out. <laughs> I work out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then, I usually let that scrub into the dermal bond, and then, um, or if you're Ann, you're closing the skin. You know, so I started, she closed it, she's an RFA, right? So once you guys become RFAs, which I hope all of you guys do, you start closing for me. And I gotta start checking my stocks or emails or something stupid. <laughs> you know, um, I start being DJ. Um, and then you dermal bond it. Wait till it's dry, the last thing I'm gonna do is put this dressing on and it peels off, right? So then I'll text you. Hey, really, the dermal bond didn't dry, but the, the whole thing fell off. You know, I peeled it off. So you keep checking the derm bond, and the cheap stuff takes forever to dry, as they know. The good stuff dries quickly. And then you put the, I use the Telpa Teddy. Everyone's different. Ask them, what do you want for your dressing, okay? And for some reason, someone's very right particular about their dressing. They get like really annoyed, I don't know why. You know, like, like I hate when I use, they use um, Mephoplex, because I think it looks ugly. It's like, it's like, like you know, like those like, uh, those New Balance dad sneakers. <laughs> and in my mind, so it looks like. So, like, so I like uh, Telfa Tech, it looks clean and elegant. So it's a little, you know, white strip and a little Tegaderm. And the other thing we need to know is, do they have allergies, right? Do they have a tape allergy, Tegaderm allergy? And then if they do, use paper tape. Because no one's allergic to paper tape, all right? So those are the things you gotta know. And then you take everything down. So now I'm out, all right? So now show me how you take the drapes off without contaminating the field. <clears throat> so we, you don't think we're watching, but we're watching from the corner of our eyes. Does that make sense? So maybe in the corner dictating, but there's always an eye on the field. Yep. Even if you don't know that we're there. <laughs> so you take this. You first take off the non-disposables, right? So the drill you can't throw in the garbage. All right, you'll get in trouble. The bone scalpel, hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment, can't throw in the garbage. The brain lab, the thing we use for um, navigation of the brain, you definitely can't throw that in the garbage. So anything that's not disposable has to come off and you're throwing garbage. So now you took all the stuff off, right? All right. And how are you gonna take that off now? Well, will you pull up the towel? Oh, let's do a survey. Who would, who would pull it up from here? Raise your hand. 
-hmm. We'll pull up from here. Why? Mm -hmm. So what's here that's really dirty? But yeah, never go butt to incision, right? <laughs> Got it? So here's another thing. So if I put a drain in, where's my drain gonna come out? So here's my incision right in the middle, guys. Come out up here or down here? Down here. Down there? Who says down here? Yeah. Up here. Um, Why up here? Same answer. That's what, that's yeah. I don't want anything near the butt that the germs can get into, right? Neur neurosurgeons are obsessed with infection. We, it's like a scarlet letter to us. If I get infection, I'll like flog myself for days. <laughs> all right? So it comes up top, all right? Because it's away from the butt, all right? And then nothing, if, they, if they're wiping or whatever when the bathroom, nothing can contaminate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? So you come from the top down. And you don't want any, any don't, of this to touch the city. Yeah. yeah. Ouch. You know, so the dressing's already on, right? You know, um, and then you put the patient. Now, if we did an ACDF through the neck, would you break scrub? Raise your hand if you break scrub. So why wouldn't you break scrub? No. So the patients, I'm just, we're just pretending it's ACDF right now, right? Correct. So let's pretend. Jimmy or oh, it's a girl, uh, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> so we did we did ACDF surgery, right? So I have the carotid internal jugular, I have the EJ external jugular, trachea. All right, a hematoma here can the patient can crash over and die very quickly. So for ACDFs, most hospitals' policy is the scrub tech is not allowed to break scrub. The patient has left the room in case they start coughing, and this has happened to me. The patient starts coughing, they, they, they blow out a clot, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the incision fills up. Mm -hmm. And they start having strider, and they can't breathe, and you can't put the tube back in because the hematoma is crushing the trachea. Mm -hmm. So I, you, I quickly asked, I, I got up really fast, and asked for a scalpel, and I cut the skin open again. So for ACDFs, even if it's not policy in your hospital, um, I recommend you guys do not break scrub. So when you pull the drapes off, you just come in the corner, because you don't, they don't need you right now, right? Just sit there, stand there. And they'd ask you, why don't you break scrub? I, I don't want to break scrub just in case it's a hematoma. No one ever criticize you for being safe. Just stand in the corner, stay scrubbed in, and just wait. Once the tube's out, the patient starts rolling out, then you can break and start breaking down your table. So for ACDS, we do not um, break scrub till the end. Well, I do. You guys don't. And sometimes, and this happened once, like many years ago, um, why well, I scrubbed it, I told the, the, the scrub tag, is open the skin up. I was like, I'm open my I'm gonna scrub it okay, just, just cut the suture, start cutting. Because you guys, you're the first defense, right? I don't wanna go in bare hand like the 1920s, yeah. right? So I had my scrub tape start cutting the sutures open, the blood flew out, you know? And then, um, so, oh yeah, another, another cool case here. I'll show you next time, next time I come back. Um, sometimes you guys use your fingers for hemostasis. Mm -hmm. So if I do a crany, oh, you know what? Or, save that thought. <laughs> so the crany will do it. All right, so who's up next? Do the head? Well, we do have a kind of head. <laughs> I, I wish I'd told my gown or not. <laughs> so we'll, we'll pretend I'm wearing a gown now, too. Hat, gown, mask. I want to see through things. Uh, head. All right, perfect. So this this patient is a real patient. I'll show you how scrub, uh, scrub checking works. So she's a known patient neurosurgeon. What does that mean? She's had multiple surgeries by us. So she got drunk, it's a true story, fell down the stairs. All right, head first, wasted. Right. What do you guys do most time? Um, so the patient had a fracture right here. There's a big vein here called the sagittal sinus. It bleeds 100 cc's a second. So the body only has seven liters of blood. So you're dead within a minute or two. You literally sang right to death. So this is a case where we talk about where we walk in. Okay, we need lots of blood in the room because I'm gonna be losing it quickly. All right, we need every hemostatic known to man. Flow seal, surgery cell, everything's on the field, avatine, snow, thrombin spray, you name it, I want it. All right, poro neuron. Okay, so you guys scrub in, you know, we spit to our fun spin. All right, so the patient is supine in pins. All right, this is where the head is, okay? Like that. So now, the surgical field is right here. So I'm gonna stand here. 
So anesthesia is where now? If I'm here. It's a cranny now. What is that? Nope, they came next to me, right? You're there. They're there, over there actually. Oh, okay. So the tube goes this way now. Because oh. we're working on the head now. So anesthesia, I want them, I always want them away from me. You know? <laughs> so they're on that side now, okay? So now you ask me, whoever's my subject, where do you want me to stand? Where do you want my table? All right, so I want you to stand here or here, and I want your table there. So this is fine setup. All right, so now we drip it off, okay? So now we need. Yeah, so the scalpel, sure. She always has a scalpel to extend this little latch she has. All right, so now I put my retractor in. Okay, now, now it's gonna tell you guys. All right, all right guys, we have a sagittal sinus injury. Before we get into this mess, it's to be prepared. So she's gonna bleed 100 cc's a second, so don't be alarmed, all right? My calmness is translated to you guys. If I panic, you'll panic, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we get ready now. So if it, there's a true sign, sagittal sinus injury, there's a hole in this vein that bleeds very quickly, I'm gonna get a patch ready. So I take some periosteum, which is some tissue in the skull, I harvest it in a little square, and we've done nothing yet, right? Not in trouble yet. So I go to the side tail with two four neural lines and make four on each corner. That's my graph. Now you snap them on each end. Okay, all right, so uh, you're my scrub tech now, right? So is this a situation where you'll be by yourself? No. no. So you say, hey guys, can you scrub it with me? You want friends, all right? No one ever falls you having friends, all right? So now you have some help. So you go, hey, well, and then you guys coordinate amongst yourselves. I'm gonna hand them instruments, and I'm gonna ask you guys to get prepared things for me. Get the flow steel ready. Everything ready. Nothing should be getting prepared during the surgery for this surgery. All right, so I have my, my graft ready that I made. Four neurons, little square, okay? So now I do my crane. All right, this, is, this actually happened. So I burr hole, burr hole, burr hole, burr hole. I spin it, spin it, spin it. I lift the bone up. All hell breaks loose. Blood's flying everywhere. All right, we found there is a hole. Mm -hmm. So I took my scrub text finger. Hey, look at that. Wow. I'm a hole. <laughs> so I go, okay, now this stops the bleeding. So now I, now I told her, if you move, the patient dies. Oh my God. All right. no so then I, then I took my gown off. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 it's like a grenade, you know? All right, so now, so now you're putting your finger there, so now she's out of the equation, right? So now you guys are the problem now, all right? So this has happened. So now I walk over, you get my graft, all right, you bring it over to me. So then now we're setting the graft right here. So we're gonna slide it in, and now I'm gonna, suture around her finger. So mm -hmm. I'll move her finger as I suture it. Mm -hmm. Down, I fix the hole. And then I'll put her finger out then. All right? Mm -hmm. So now we're safe, okay? Now I'll show you, I actually have pictures of this. We'll go back and show you pictures real quick. So you can kind of visualize what we just did. If we have time, we can. You guys? 12.50. All right. You guys want to be anywhere? All right, so now this bone was exposed to air. Right? Because she fell down the stairs. You can see the skull when she came in. So we can't use this bone anymore. Right? It's, it's dirty. Unless the staircase was sterile, which I doubt. She didn't fall in the OR. Um, so you do a mesh craniopathy. We, we discussed this before. So I put the screws in. If you can't put the screw in, I ask you if you need to open some jars for you. All right? And we, we close the skin. Okay? Put some drains in there. All right? So now the patient goes away. And that, essentially, that's the case. Okay? So let's pretend. The bleeding, I couldn't get it stopped. You know, that's any rapid fire flow seal, surgical cell, shell foam thrombin. I build a mountain. You know, and the, the number one way to stop bleeding is pressure. So you just kind of put pressure. Your fingers, the your fingers, the most important instrument. And then until I figure things out, the key is stop the bleeding momentarily. You take a deep breath and figure things out. All right. So we'll do that sometime. All right. And we do get short sometimes. We're not trying to be mean or assholes when it's bleeding a lot, it's very stressful for us mm -hmm. because we know the patient can bleed to death. So we, are, we might stop using the word please and thank you. You know, it'd be short sentences. Flow seal now, this now, hurry up, let's go. You know, don't be offended, right? We may be like a little dickish, I guess. <laughs> but it's just because like, the, the, we're not freaking out, but there's stress internally and all pleasantries go out the window. So we need to have short sentences, quick communication, and then if sometimes someone's fumbling a lot, I will say, hey, you need, to, you need to be scrubbed out now, someone needs to come in, I know what they're doing. And it's not offensive to you, it's just you're not experienced enough for the situation. Yeah. And so if you don't feel comfortable, say it. Say, hey, I don't feel comfortable in this case, I want someone more experienced with me. No one's ever gonna fault you, you know? 
All right, so here, I'll, we'll go back real quick. I'll show you the slides in that case we did. And then we'll, you guys can go.